I have some great news today with these favorite Vata foods for fall. Today's Ayurvedic tips are all about Vata balancing foods that help you feel balanced and they might even balance your immune system naturally. So stay tuned for your license to indulge this fall. with Flourish Yoga, your wellness lifestyle coach using Ayurveda and essential oils. So today I'm sharing some simple wellness and healthy daily habits for Ayurvedic self-care. If you're intrigued about this Ayurveda thing, make sure to click on the subscribe button below and ring the bell to be notified for the next video in this Ayurvedic lifestyle series. And if you have no idea what this Vata thing is or Vata dosha, or you know what a dosha is but don't know what your dosha type might be, then click on the link in the description and the comments to take a super fun Ayurveda test, okay? The link is really easy to remember. It's simply flourishdoshaquiz.com. And this free dosha quiz gives you practical tips for foods for your dosha, yoga, and all sorts of Ayurvedic tips. So stay to the end and I will tell you how to also get some recommendations on essential oils for your unique dosha that are really supportive, especially in this Ayurvedic fall season. And I know, if you already know your dosha and it's not vata, you might be wondering, well, this is all about vata, what do I eat? I'm a pitta or a kapha, so don't worry, I've got you on this. Even though your dominant dosha um, might not be vata, your vata nature does tend to go out of balance in the fall. So eating in the season is still important. But there are a few things to adjust, and we're going to highlight those at the end. So stay tuned for that, and I'll highlight some things as we go along. So I've been a wellness lifestyle coach for over 10 years now, specializing in Ayurveda and essential oils. And what I love about this combination of Ayurveda, essential oils, and yoga is how simple wellness can be. It really is the whole complete picture. Healthy daily habits become easy when you know the why, which ones are going to work for you, and what's not going to work for you that you can let go, right? So today's tips, believe it or not, actually might reduce your stress around eating. So let's dive in and talk about foods to balance vata dosha, okay, aka foods for fall. All right, so vata foods for fall need to oppose those qualities of fall. So if you remember from the five tips video, fall is dry, it's windy, aka it's full of air, it's rough, it's cool. So to help keep us healthy and to boost our immune system naturally, we're looking for moist, heavy, dense, warm, and smooth kind of foods to put on our plates, okay? Smooth in texture, really. Um, and maybe subtle in taste would be good as well, right? So think of the Thanksgiving feast foods, right? So we have our turkey, which is heavy and dense. We have our sweet potatoes and our roasted vegetables, like our beets, turnips, which are astringent, so they're good for those other doshas. Parsnips, Brussels sprouts, butternut squash soup, it's my favorite. And of course, the pumpkin pie. Right? These are all foods that counteract that dry, that dry, that dry, that dry, light, cool, airy nature of fall. These foods keep us grounded. Okay? So in the bad season of fall, we want to favor warm cooked foods and we can add some flavor with some warming spices. We'll get to those in a moment. So these spices and the warmth of our foods help us to digest. Um, our foods. So it keeps our digestive fire boosted so that we can extract the nutrients um, of all these rich fall foods that we're eating, right? Especially when that temperature gets cooler, our digestive system cools down as well. Another tip for this one would be to choose those soups and stews that have been cooked together and like uh, pre-digested for ease of digestion. All right, what are the favorite fatta foods for fall? If we're looking at our fruits, we want to choose apples that are cooked Mangoes are all right, um, bananas, pears, figs. As we get further into winter, um, preferencing like those oranges and grapefruits, lemons, limes, tangerines, anything of the citrus, sour nature is going to be good. Good, but make sure that they're sweet, that they're ripe, right? And then vegetables, we want to have preferably cooked for vatas. Um, beets are great, Brussels sprouts, carrots, green beans, pumpkins are good, squash, sweet potatoes are wonderful onions, parsnips, peas, all of those are great. 
Um, in terms of grains, we look at rice, brown rice is good, farro, quinoa, oats are really good for fall, horvata, um, even wheat is great, and amaranth is another good one. Lentils um, or legumes, all legumes are going to be good for bata, um, except they they can be a little bit actually on the airy side, so we got to maybe watch a little bit. But in nature, they're grounding and they're heavy, right? But our red lentils, our mung beans, our dal and our kidney beans are especially good for bata. Nuts and seeds, everything on there is going to be great, um, but especially cashews, pumpkin seeds, pecans, and walnuts. Dairy, most dairy is actually okay for vata, right? It is grounding um, in nature. Cactus really have to watch out for the dairy, but um, vatas can get away with it a bit more. Um, so the ghee, the butter, the buttermilk, um, sour creams are going to be good, the yogurts. But you want to choose ones that are warm or at room temperature, ideally, right? So anything cool in nature is going to um, douse that digestive fire. And then meats. Meats are actually really good for vata. I know a lot of baddas don't like to eat meats. They can be hard to digest for, um, for baddas. So if that is you, um, you might want to add some spices um, or choose those other um, protein alternatives that we've talked about. But meat products that are good for bada in this season are um, the really grounding, right? So especially the beef, the turkey, um, duck, chicken, oysters are good. Venison, shrimp, um, fish, eggs, all of those are really good. Um, lobster, if it's in season, is great for vata as well. Nice and moist, right? And, and grounding and heavy and sweet, all of those things. Okay, cooking oils. Um, these could be cooking oils or they could be your daily massage oil, right? Um, so sesame oil, avocados oil is great. Almond, peanut, safflower, olive oil is good for vata. Sweeteners, you can look for your raw honey. is super good, especially in this season for boosting your immune system. Um, maple syrup. Dates and raisins. Remember, dried fruits are sweeteners, not fruit, right? They're way too much sugar to be considered a fruit. Um, molasses and rice syrup are really good for fall as well. Um, and last but not least, we want to look at the spices for Bada Dosha, okay? Almost all spices are good for the fall season, especially the warming ones like allspice, black pepper, cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, coriander, cumin um, is great, garlic, ginger, um, nutmeg in moderation for vata. Nutmeg can be really drying in nature. Oregano is good, so any of those ones are going to be good as well. Paprika, turmeric, uh, especially good for um, eating digestion. So it's a really favorite one for all of the doshas. Okay, so what about smoothies? Are smoothies good for you in the Ayurvedic fall season? Just because it's fall doesn't necessarily mean you have to give up your smoothie habit if that's working for you. They can still be that key component to getting your energy and your brain boost for the day, as long as you don't have too much sweet and then it's gonna spike your glucose, right? So instead you wanna choose ingredients for your small food smoothies from that Vata food list and enjoy that energy boost while still honoring the season that you're in, right? So I'm gonna put a link in the description to a few Vata recipes for small food fall smoothies, um, some energy boosting, early small food smoothies, and some beet smoothies for fall. Um, look for that in the description. And then fall foods for pitta dosha. Let's just focus on that for a moment. So just remember that pitta dosha needs sweet, astringent, and bitter. So your root vegetables all get that green light, but go easy on those citrus fruits and any of the fermented foods. Maybe able to stomach or digest the cooler salads, but again, in moderation in this fall Ayurvedic season. And go easy on some of the heating spices. A little goes a long way for a pitta, right? So the pungents in that are not as, as great. They can throw that pitta off. But in fall, you get to take a little bit more of that in. And then some of our foods for kapha dosha, right? This one gets a bit trickier because kapha needs the opposite of that, essentially. So kapha needs astringent, bitter, and pungent. So we want to go easy on some of those rich fall root vegetables. Um, and make, or make sure you add lots of spice to them to counteract that. But there's still lots of fall vegetables that are astringent in nature, right? So the beets, the Brussels sprouts, and the squashes, and the beans, we talked about those. Um, and, but, and like that, I want to turn up the heat with the temperature and the spice of what you're cooking in this season. All right, so to wrap up, our foods for the Ayurvedic fall season are sweet, sour, and salty. You want to enjoy those comfort foods and make sure to heat your foods. You want them warm. We went over all of that in our five tips to balance vata in the Ayurvedic fall season video. So check that out if you haven't already. And embrace the change in this season, right? Help your body adapt along with Mother Nature 
by bulking up for the winter with those nourishing fall flavors, right? You can enjoy these kind of guilt-free, all these comfort foods. So share below what you love best about the rich Ayurvedic fall foods and share your links to your favorite fall recipes. That would be really amazing too. So at Flourish Yoga, we're all about making your wellness lifestyle simple and easy. So join me for the next Simple Wellness class. This is a live class where you can um, tell me about your wellness journey. We can talk more about Ayurveda and essential oils and those challenges. You can ask questions. We get kind of some personalized advice, some one-on-one -on -one time. And the link to register for that is in the description and the comments. So remember I told you about that Ayurveda um, and essential oils for your dosha guide. Um, you can get that. It's got in, including some tips on your base oils, essential oils for the season, how to use essential oils with your daily habits from the Ayurveda routine. And you get all of that um, when you come to that simple wellness class, right? So when you that's kind of a free gift for coming to that class. So make sure you join me for the next one. And don't forget to take that dosha quiz if you haven't done that already. So you kind of know what your nature is for these fall food recommendations. And with that, you also get some specific recommendations if you haven't been writing all this down um, for not only the foods, but also some yoga and all sorts of Ayurvedic tips on that. Also, if you could like, subscribe, follow, share, do all of those great things to help us stay connected and help others to find this too, that would be also appreciated. And check out our playlists for essential oil meditations, yoga, essential oil classes, Ayurvedic tips, and some really fun and simple DIY recipes. All of these you can use to amplify your wellness lifestyle. Remember to enjoy those rich fall foods guilt-free right now. Namaste.